What's up, Star Family? Marissa here. Today's video is just a little bit of an update with everything that's going on with my Saturn return. And, you know, I feel like what has served me the most throughout understanding the nature of reality in a way that makes sense for me is hearing the myriad of ways that others are navigating their reality from a, a place that feels very free and, and very liberating, right? Regardless of what's actually happening on the outside. And so if you guys have been following me for a while, you know through you know, my cancel culture playlist and just you know, the past six months has been extremely transitional, transformational, and it has been encouraging me to fall into a state of deeper surrender and deeper flow with, with life and in a more harmonious dance with life, right? You can say that this the way of the Tao. I'm really starting to connect the dots overall in terms of what Saturn return is and what dark nights of the soul are and just the process of the purification of your personality, I should say. Because I think in a, in a video that I titled The Purification of Your Personality, it was only after I'd already filmed that video and it was in the queue to be launched on my channel that my guides came through and corrected me. <laughs> they came to correct and they said, you know, it's not necessarily your soul that is being purified. Your soul is pure, but it's the personality. And it's, you know, it's kind of like, the personality is kind of like if you think of a valve, right? And your soul is wanting to come through like water coming through a pipe. And if your personality, all the flaws and all the, the ways that you, protect yourself in the ways that you kind of cut off that natural flow, you can think of that like debris, right? Like gathering debris within this pipe. And so the more that you clear through the process of purification and unearthing your soul, the more that your soul can shine through whatever template and whatever blueprint is most in alignment for your soul and your personality, I should say, this time around. And so I'm really seeing how all of life really is trying to usher us in that direction of a more surrendered state, right? And so that ushering sometimes feels like a push <laughs> and a shove when we maybe feel like we're not exactly ready for it. But the more that you can trust, the more that you can enjoy it. And then the more smoothly things tend to go overall, regardless if you're in a, um, a pocket of everything's falling apart in your life or, or what have you, you can really enjoy it. So I wanted to just give you guys an update about what I've learned so far moving back in with my co-parent. I like joking around and saying things like my baby's daddy and everything just because I tend to be a very jokey, kind of lighthearted person in general. But co-parent, there's something about like co-parent feels very mature. And I mean, that really feels very reflective and it feels like it represents our dynamic very well because you know it's not until I really talk to other people about mine and Greg that's Maya's dad it's not until I really talk to other people about our dynamic that I see how unique it really is and that was something that I could intuit when we first had separated as a romantic couple and again if you've been following me for a while I don't necessarily not like labels because in a, in a way it makes me feel like it's coming from a dogmatic place or I just like it's coming from a conceptual place of like oh I'm just so spiritual that I don't like labels like that's not where it's coming from it's just I really have seen over over time that the second you adopt a label it kind of goes in alignment with what I've been talking about of morphogenetic fields and just reality bubbles. It's like when you adopt a label, you're also subjugating yourself to the energy of the group consciousness surrounding that label. So I'm a highly, highly sensitive individual and I can feel all of the things infused with certain labels. And for me, I've just noticed over the course of just being a woman and being an adult and dating that the second a label comes into place things can get weird things can get it, it can just make a very pure dynamic feel a little bit rocky and it can just like taint a very natural unfolding of things right and then it makes things more heady at least that's just what i've experienced rather than allowing things to just like be as they are you know when i first separated and when i first moved out 
was about was three years ago. It's almost three years ago, uh, almost exactly. I could feel inherently within that that my decision to do that to to move out and break the the family core would you know I could feel that it was going to benefit everyone long term holistically. Even though in the midst of doing that, it felt like some people probably felt very hurt. And I think I just understood, I know I just understood that I would rather my child be between homes that are less charged uh, because there was a lot of anger between, you know, within, you know, Maya's dad as an individual, with me as an individual. And we were both like, we had gone through some pretty intense awakenings together and I just needed time. And I I believe he did too, to really grow and, and to learn who we actually were and so this past three years i've really done an an incredible amount of unearthing and discovering who it is i came to be or more of it i feel like i get closer to that every every day you know every day you become more joyful or you know you're having purges or whatever but even behind that you can just feel that there's a deeper reason for it and so as you know the years have gone on and as the days go on i definitely do feel much more authentic to myself whereas before you know, living with other people and trying to discover who you are. It's like, you know, take going back to visit your family, for example, after having an awakening or going through um, an experience that really shows you more of who you are. It's like when you go around people that think they know who you are, they're, they're holding you in a vibrational, in a vibrational pattern almost. And this is an innocent thing, but they almost keep you within a certain realm based off of who they thought you were from past versions of self and so it's not like i'm I'm just really seeing during this time especially moving back in and just you know we're living in separate rooms and we're all roommates right now but i am seeing how like a lot of us don't go into relationships with people that we've known with a blank slate like we're consistently carrying our past ideas of who we think someone is into this current dynamic and so you know, I understand just how long I've done this before, whoops, and how long I've been paying attention that, you know, the things that we tend to resist the most are also inherently the things that hold the key to our liberation. And so, you know, the transitional period, like even though Greg and I were spending more time together as a family and, you know, completely platonic, but just truly enjoying our daughter, truly enjoying this beautiful being that Maya is. And I will say that when I first came back in, I was noticing that, you know, that it got really heavy at first. And I think a big part of that was allowing expectations on both sides to, to die away. So allowing expectations of what the dynamic meant or what this new living arrangement meant. And I'm very sensitive, so I can really tune into when someone has expectations that they're not expressing but they're holding them and when i can feel those expectations are infringing on what feels actually in alignment for me that is when i can start to kind of pull my energy away and like i don't want to feed that and even though i've had conversations before like i can have conversations with people before i'm sure you guys have have seen this happen time and time again like you can't control how you feel Right? when there's feelings involved with, with towards someone else, it's like you don't know exactly why those feelings are there. right? And there might be you know, two different reasons for that soul contract being there. It might not be as congruent as one might think. So for some person, or for one person in a dynamic, it might be that there's feelings for someone, right? And they're expecting it to go somewhere. And through those expectations not being met, they're then given a permission slip to not make it mean anything about them to not call it a rejection to not call it something that it really is not because we're not controlling it from this level right the level of the personality does not control why we like someone why we have feelings towards someone etc and so for the other person in dynamic say they're the one that's uh that is being liked but doesn't also feel those reciprocated um feelings on a romantic level is what i'm conveying here then you know, the lesson in there might just be setting clear boundaries and knowing how to knowing how to carry yourself in, in such a way that is not allowing them to feed any illusion, but also 
having a compassionate heart, right? And so that's just kind of like everything that I've been learning. And so there was like kind of a, like the first week that I moved back in, it was kind of heavy for both of us. I mean, also being eclipse season, Greg and I are both Virgos, his birthday is two days before me. So Mercury retrograde really, really affects us. And communication has already been a big, a major learning lesson for both of us within this dynamic and especially you know as as being co-parents so there was a little bit of like heaviness and like awkward energy at first but now it feels like we've kind of settled into something that feels more authentic for our dynamic which again <laughs> it's interesting because i'm like oh a lot of like my male friends kind of stop i don't know there were a couple like male friends that stopped talking to me and that can be for its own reason but in intuitively i'm like oh i moved back in with my father's daughter so i'm sure many people have ideas of what they think that what that means right and so i just sometimes i forget that many people don't think the way that i do and don't think the way that we do like it's just like this seems like the most natural and normal phase especially because you know we're in a situation where maya is the main priority and her growing up with a solid foundation and a solid sense of her being able to create who she is and not having people from the outside tell her who she is and us just really creating an environment where we can nurture the wholeness of, of her spirit and to not put her in environments like we're not like it's not like the buddha's father that wanted to protect him from all evils or anything like that like it's a fine balance between just honoring our intuition of like knowing that we don't want to send her to public school we don't want to send her to daycares we don't want other people to take to take care of her uh because you know the parents tend to have the highest level of best interest for the child you know again i work in generalization so this is not always across the board but just from what i have uh what i have found and what feels truthful to me at this point in time so i also just wanted to leave off with one of the biggest lessons and and why i could feel that there was such tension between you know her dad and i that first week especially was because we were both pulling in old versions of who we thought the other to be and i can't really speak for for him but i can speak for my own self like i understand that when we are healing and and preparing to enter into a new paradigm that all of those things that we are asking to be rectified within our own selves within our own energy field we will start to see that within our outer reality more and more. And it's almost like, I don't like the notion of karmic tests, but you can call it somewhat like a karmic test. It's almost like when you're beating the boss, so to speak, it's like if you have struggled with anger and you're meeting with you're meeting people in your external reality that are triggering that, that are kind of triggering, like know how to poke your buttons or that are also, I don't want to say inability to process their anger, but you can just tell that things annoy them and set them off, etc. during this time too, like how planets are and everything is going to affect this. And I just think what's happening on a world level, there's just a lot of hostility in the air, but this is just like the best example I have right now. And it's also very relevant for my own dynamic but you'll you'll be meeting people and situations that reflect that that same pattern within you and it's like you have you then have the ability to create more karma for your own self by judging them and judging the other person or you can choose to heal it and to transcend to a higher level by accepting them and remembering that you're you're not dealing with them and the core of who they are if you're reacting to anger you're you're just you're dealing with their personality right you're dealing with the their own inhibitions to allowing the fullness of their soul to pour through so i've really been extremely mindful during this time of allowing everyone within the household to show up and to not bring past expectations of how they've acted towards me or what's coming up for them um not not like i'm doing my best to allow people to show up blank slated and for me to show up as blank slated as i can within my my dynamics too so again the notion of not carrying a past version of who someone is because that it kind of reminds me of what ram das says about you know being the the type of being that others can come up for air around so others can you know you're not meeting other people that are confirming and validating who it is that you think you are right that's what we're all kind of doing we're all like make believing that we're actually these people and these personalities and these roles that we really are 
but to be the space that people can come up for air around is to remember that this is just the personality and the anger and the bad habits and the bitterness or whatever is coming up also goes along with the personality. It's also transient. It's also old karma playing itself out, maybe new karma playing itself out, whatever. And so that has really been my biggest lesson during this time, specifically around the um, you know the new family dynamic, or I shouldn't say new, but just like this new living situation. But overall, like everything else, you know, it seems like the things that I've resisted the most have actually set me free the most. And like, even though on one hand, this seemed like the most obvious direction to go, the most obvious decision for everyone's best interest and just like, just what felt the most right intuitively. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's not also inherently going to be a lot of purging and a lot of heaviness during that, right? Because especially when you're dealing with other people, there's other energies to navigate. There's other, again, expectations and other people's, you know, karmic wounds and karmic patterns that they're healing out and, and all of that. So I hope this brought you guys some sort of value and clarity and insight into your own reality and what you're exploring. And I see, I hope I'll see you guys soon. Much love.